Hi YouTube, welcome to this video. So in this video it's a really good instructional on how to make a grow light for your vivarium or terrarium. It doesn't have to be a grow light for a vivarium, you can use it for other reasons such as greenhouses or grow rooms, but um, for this, for the purposes of this video I'm doing it in the context of a vivarium. If you're one of these people that have been trying to grow plants and have been really struggling, this will be a game changer for you. It will definitely produce a massive amount of plants. So we've worked out how we're going to do that then, so we're going to use LED lights of a sufficient brightness. We're going to get the colour range um, to be yeah full spectrum and we're going to use a tactical amount of blue and red lights. So the purpose of this video is to illuminate the vivarium and you don't want to spoil the view by having it in red or blue. You don't want it to look like the inside of a submarine for example. So what we're going to do is use like a tactical amount. So I use around 70% full spectrum light, about 20% blue light, and then just another 10% red light. So not an awful lot of red light. I like using blue light because it sometimes reflects off the leaves and looks like it's reflecting a nice blue sky. So it creates a natural effect. So the materials that we're using, uh, we're going to be using LED tape lights um, with a sufficient output, colour temperature, voltage um, and what whatever will meet the spec specifications of your vivarium. LED connectors, DC jack tips which are female. You'll also need an LED driver or a power adapter. I would recommend using an LED driver because it produces a certain amount of voltage and watt and it'll filter out the electricity to be the perfect amount whereas an adapter it's quite expensive to get that exact amount to be able to um, deliver the correct amount of electricity to the LED. So I'd rather use um, an LED, LED driver really, it's up to you. Also we're going to be using a sheet metal panel. The reason why we're not using plastic is that when you connect LED tape to plastic it tends to warp and bend. So you don't want to be using that, you want to be using metal because metal won't warp or bend, it will stay rigid with the heat. I'm using an aluminium panel, um, I find that to be lightweight and easy to store on the top of the vivarium. You can use steel or other metals but I prefer to use aluminium. Also I'm going to need a drill um, which is suitable to cut through metal and also nuts and bolts, which we're going to be using for legs. So I'm using 10 mil bolts, which I think are the perfect size. So we're going to go through a few electrical terms now, just to show you what it is, because it can be quite confusing and it's, it's best to know, because it's quite dangerous uh, working with electricity. <clears throat> and you need to, to have your power inputs matched perfectly. You don't want to be causing fires or anything like that. So volts are the pressure of electricity pushing through the circuit. So it's not the amount of electricity, it's how much that electricity is forced through the circuit. So imagine electricity to be like water, and that the wires are like pipes. It's how much that water is pushed through the pipes, rather than the amount of water that's going through. Then watts, this is the, the, this is the actual amount of electricity input, um, inputted into the circuit. So it's, it's the amount of water that's going through the pipes not the amount of water that's being pushed through the pipes, it's the amount that's going through the pipes and the resistance. So in an electrical circuit you put your volts, you put the watts through, the volts push the watts, but with resistance the the LEDs will resist so it acts like sort of a small um, small channel within like a water piping and it will it will cause resistance. So this will sap pressure from the circuit caused by LEDs and gradually it'll absorb the pressure from the voltage within the circuit so you won't have enough pressure to go through the full amount of the circuit. So that's why we tactically use um, DC jacks and input the electricity in a number of different places throughout the LED panel because this avoids the, the resistance that the LEDs produce and what you'll find is if you have a voltage drop um, this will, you'll see that the end of the bulb or the end of the LED tape will be dim compared to the input, which is something that we want to avoid. Also, if you have a bulb flicker, 
which is when it's just coming on and off all the time, <clears throat> you probably won't be able to understand why it's coming on, going off and coming on again. Um, but the reason why this is, is the actual amount of the watts, the, the amount of watts that, that is required for the LEDs is too high for the power source to produce. So that basically there's not enough electricity going into it, so it'll take all the electricity, which will cause the power source to black out, and then it'll come back on again. So it'll, it'll just keep flickering. Um, what you need to make sure is that the LEDs that you've got have enough enough wattage supplied to them you need to match the volts perfectly and the watts so go on your led website look at the products look at the specifications usually you'll be able to see <clears throat> that the specifications will say how many watts per meter the um, led tape requires so you'll have to times that by the amount of meters that you use so you'll have a watts per meter reading with the voltage it will be something like 12 volts or 24 volts but that's for the whole circuit regardless of how long the led tape is so please don't put any more volts than are, than that are required but with watts you'll have to work out the watts per meter and work out the right watt range so now i'm going to go straight on to making the um light and i hope you enjoy this video i'm using a sheet aluminium panel and this will work as like a flat surface to stick led tape to you can get this customly cut cut out uh, using either amazon or ebay or, or another supplier it's not too expensive i think you can get a sheet of quite thin aluminium um, cut out for maybe about eight to ten pounds using um, some 10 millimeter bolts as the feet for this to sort of sit on top of the tank the bolts will slot through these holes and i'll be using these nuts to fasten um onto the uh, metal so it sort of pins it into the hole i'm going to set over 15 millimeters today right so 15 millimeters by 15 millimeters by 15 millimeters so what arthur's doing here is just using this as a rough guide and creating a, a is inscribing a line this way, which is how many centimetres? 15 millimetres. 15 millimetres here. And it does it on the other side, which is also 15 millimetres. And where the lines cross, this will be the exact um, same dimensions on each side. Right, so the first step is to use a very small size drill bit. And the theory is, we're going to... One minute before you do it. We're going to start off quite small and then work our way up larger because it's very hard and, and awkward to drill a large hole straight away so he's going to start off with a small one so what size is that drill bit that's a 3.3 millimeter 3.3 mil drill bit and he's going to drill through well, shouldn't we have eye protection on yeah yeah you should have eye protection on this is applying quite a lot of pressure no, you don't apply any pressure, really. No, you don't apply any pressure. It looked like it was. So there we have it. It's, it's put put in a smaller hole. So now we're going to move on to the larger drill bit. So what size is this? This is a 6.8. This is a 6.8 drill bit, which is the uh, perfect millimetre to be able to get the 10 millimetre bolt through. Okay, so this is a ten. This is a ten mil bolt, which means the top of it's ten mil, and the actual um, threaded part is a lot thinner. But we're actually using a drill bit size six point four. Six point eight. Six point eight for this ten mil drill um, bolt, and it'll just go straight through. Provides enough clearance, and it sits it's snugly in there. And now we're just doing the same thing for a, a smaller, smaller LED panel that I'm using for. Um, a tree frog tank. Right, so here's here's the actual panel now that we've drilled the holes. And as you can see, it's quite ergonomical. It looks quite professional once it's been sort of cleaned up and, and polished off. So these um, 10, 10 mil bolts just fit, fit straight through <coughs> each hole. And you just use the nut to sort of tighten it on. So this is an example of LED voltage drop. So I tried originally to go around and use 90 degrees connectors, but actually that creates a massive voltage drop um, because you use only one power source is pushing voltage all the way through 
the circuit. Um, so and there's a lot of tape there. So what we want to do is really have a number of different power out inputs going through each section of the LED. <clears throat> so as you can see, the way to rectify a voltage drop is by doing that. So that's how you solve it. But obviously it's not ideal to have wires going straight into the middle of the circuit. So instead of this, what we're doing is just laying them out directly horizontally and we'll be using DC female jacks, uh, about four or five different sections of the LEDs and that will produce, that will input the right amount of voltage across all of it so there's not a voltage drop. So that's just me um, putting all the tape down. They've got adhesive backings to them which is great, makes it a lot easier than having to glue it down for instance. Um, so yeah, that works really effectively. I'm then going to get the DC, well, sorry, we're go going to get the LED connectors and then connect them up. So I'm sort of zigzagging it and bridging the gap on each side. And then we'll be using, connecting the DC jacks to red and black wires attaching them to a connector and either soldering them in place or just um, electrical taping them together and as you can see I'm using um, a four-way <clears throat> split uh, jack splitter and this is this is the sort of finished article it's all been connected up I've got four um, inputs and it's only connected to one power source, but as long as that power source is split, it'll produce enough um, voltage to, to push through all of it. So that's fine. As you can see, it's mainly full spectrum light, but we're using like a smaller percentage of blue light, then an even more smaller percentage of red light. And then this is it within my vivarium. So this is the, the smaller red-eyed tree frog vivarium that I'm using. Um, and as you can see, it looks quite like an effective light source. The blue is quite heavy on this one. I wanted it to be heavy because I wanted all the devil's ivy to sort of become bushier. And then this <coughs> is from about six weeks of growth. Um, six to eight weeks worth of growth. So you can see the plant has well and truly boomed in that period. And grown about five or six times the size that it was in the first place. And this is the light within my vivarium. Um, you can see it illuminates it very well, but the the vivarium was very uh, sort of bushy, so I cut it back. Then I left it for another two months, and then I had to chop it back because the light just produced so much plants. And I often thought, um, how could it? How could people ever make money from selling plants? And then I used this this lighting and realised it produces a phenomenal amount of plants. So this is it after I've cut the terrarium back. Um, you can see it creates a really effective light source. But I mean, it, that's after chopping it back. As you can see, the the lumens, the, the looks within this vivarium is about 13,025, which is about three times the strength of a normal sort of jung exoterra jungle dawn. I think it's Ar Arcadia jung jungle dawn. Uh, they, they only produce about 5,000 lux. Um, and now you can look on the screen now this is how overgrown the vivarium became over a, like a couple of months um, you can see that the top of the tank has just flourished with devil's ivy and ficus pamilla to the point where you literally can't see from the top downwards you can't you can't have a bird's eye view of the vivarium because the plants just take over the full amount of it so i chopped this back and i produced a massive stack of plants which i've now potted up and they've created a value of about £50 on the sort of high street value for plants, which is fantastic um, in a couple of months uh, that it's produced that amount of, of plant life. So, yeah, by all means, give this a go. If you've got any questions, please just drop them in the comments or send me a message. And I hope this really works for you. I know it will for a fact, but I want you to try, try it out and see how much the plants grow. If you're one of these people that have been trying to grow plants and have been really struggling, this will be a game changer for you. It will definitely produce a massive amount of plants. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe, I'll be posting a lot more content in the, in the coming few weeks. So, yeah, thanks a lot. See you later, guys.